Hello, my name is Louise McCluskey and I'm going to present this e-lecture, Introduction to Eurocode 3. So this introduction is quite brief and it will touch upon the development of Eurocode 3, the structure of Eurocode 3, and then at the end I'll go through some of the major changes which are different to BS5950. So the first thing I'll talk about is the development of Eurocode 3. The aim of the Eurocodes in general is to provide a harmonised set of design rules for use throughout Europe so a common structure or language, but to also be flexible enough to allow each country to make certain choices on parameter values or methods used in certain situations. Um, the Eurocode um, can make alliances for national choice through the use of the national annex, and this will be indicated in the Eurocode. So in the UK, you'll sometimes see notes that tell us to refer to the UK national annex instead of using the values or methods given in the core Eurocode document. Um, the recommended values and methods determined by each country are referred to as nationally determined parameters, or NDPs for short. And the NDPs are important because they determine aspects of the design relating to the construction and serviceability of the structure. So I'm going to briefly run through the structure of Eurocode 3. So it's broken up into six parts. So generic rules, bridges, towers, masts and chimneys. Silos, tanks and pipelines, piling and crane supporting structures. The one that we are most concerned with for this series of lectures is EN 1993 Part 1, which covers generic rules. If you want to design a bridge, then you would need 1993 Part 2, but 1993 Part 2 only contains supplementary rules for bridges. Therefore, you will also need to refer to 1993 Part 1. Likewise, if you were designing a tower, you would need to refer to 1993 Part 3, but you would also need to keep referring back to 1993 Part 1. So, 1993 Part 1 is the one that we will be using the most often. EN 1993 Part 1 is broken up into 12 further subparts. So, we have general rules, which we will most, be most interested in, fire, cold form, thin gauge, stainless steel, plated elements and shells. We might use 1993 part 1.5 to check if we need a stiffener under a point load. So although it's called plated elements, it covers things like the resistance of webs. And the remaining subparts are on the next slide. Um, so continuing on, we have plates, which are transversely loaded, joints, which we will need to refer to for the design of tension members, fatigue, Fracture toughness, cables, and high strand steels. So, the structure of Eurocode 3 is quite different to BS5950, as you've already seen. We have the subparts, and for example, EN 1993 Part 1 contains several subparts based on structural phenomena. So, subparts on tension, compression, bending, shear, and buckling, etc. And each of these subparts can be applied to any element. So this is a major change from BS5950 where you would have had sections for designing different elements, so say a beam or compression member. Well, in the Eurocodes we don't have those. So if we were designing a beam, we would need to look at the subparts relating to bending, shear and combined bending and shear. And the reason the Eurocodes are arranged in this manner is because it means less duplication of the design rules and it also promotes a better understanding of structural behaviour. So that was just a quick look at the structure of Eurocode 3 and now I'll go through some of the major differences between Eurocode 3 and BS5950. So these are the major differences and I'm going to take each of these in turn so you can see exactly the changes that have been made. Um, so there are several changes. So the member axes, words used, there are different symbols and informative subscripts are used and you'll come across a lot of gamma factors in your design. So first of all, the member axes. So the system that Eurocode 3 uses is different to that used in BS5950. So the major axis in the Eurocodes is the YY axis, which you would have known as the minor axis in BS5950, and the minor axis is now the ZZ axis. And the axes used in Eurocode 3 are consistent with the sections of the Eurocodes which deal with concrete and timber designs. So here is a diagram showing you the member axes. So 
YY you would have known as XX, ZZ you would have known as YY. So this is a major difference in the codes and something that you should definitely be aware of. The next change is the use of different words. So instead of design loads or forces, we're now dealing with actions and effects. You might come across permanent and variable actions, so those you would know better as dead and live loads respectively. Verifications are carried out to make sure the resistance, so the capacity, is sufficient against design actions. Another change is the use of different symbols and the inclusion of informative subscripts. So for example, the elastic modulus is indicated by the EL subscript and the plastic modulus by PL. So it means that symbols are quite meaningful. Due to the member axis changes changing, terms which were about the major or minor axis, like the second moment of area, will change. So IX becomes IY and IY becomes IZ. A lot of the symbols used to identify section properties have also changed. So, as I said, a number of the symbols used to identify section dimensions have changed. So, for example, the flange thickness in Eurocode 3 is TF compared to capital T in 5950. The web thickness is now TW compared to small t. H is used for the depth of the beam, and you can see that there are a couple of other changes to be aware of. So we've already touched upon the informative subscripts used in the error codes. So symbols followed by the subscript ED means that it's a design effect. And if it's followed by RD, then it's design resistance. So, for example, N is the term for axial load. So if it is followed by e, the ED subscript, then it's a design axial force. But if it was followed by RD, then it would be the design resistance to an axial force. In some cases, the symbols can be quite long-winded, so it can make expressions seem longer and more complex. But the informative nature of the subscripts is definitely a benefit. Neuroquick 3 defines the following material coefficients. So you have the modulus of elasticity E equal to 210 kN per millimeter squared. The shear modulus is approximately 81 kN per millimeter squared, and Poisson's ratio is 0.3. The value of the modulus of elasticity used in Eurocodes is slightly higher than that used in BS5950. So there you would have used 205 kN per millimeter squared. Now something that you'll definitely come across when using Eurocode 3 are these gamma factors and these partial factors are applied to the characteristic values of resistance to obtain design resistances. It's important to note here that the UK National Annex specifies the values of these gamma factors so gamma M0 which is to, to do with the resistance of cross sections is 1, gamma M1 which is to do with the resistance of a member to buckling is also 1 and gamma M2 is related to the resistance of a cross section to fracture, and it's 1.25. The reason it's higher is because it reflects the undesirable nature of this failure mode. So those are the gamma factors, and you will constantly have to use those when designing steel structures to Eurocode 3. So the UK National Annex tells us to refer to the product standards to get the nominal values of the yield and ultimate tensile strength for hot rolled steel sections. So here's just an extract from Table 7 from EN, 1025 part 2 and so you can determine the nominal strengths by the thickness of the steel and the steel grade used. There are some notable omissions from the Euro codes, so here a few of the main ones. So for the design of compression members there is no guidance given on how to calculate the effective length, so I would recommend that you use the ones given in BS5950. There is no guidance on how to calculate the critical moment MCR for the design of unrestrained beams. So you'll have to refer to the NCCI document, and that stands for Non-Contradictory Complementary Information. And the document that you'll need to refer to is SN003, and you can get that from the Access Steel website. Another omission is the deflection limits, but the UK National Annex provides a table of vertical and horizontal limits, so you sh should refer to these. So that's the introductory, introductory e-lecture finished. You can go on and view the other e-lectures of the design of different elements, and you might notice some of the things I pointed out, like the gamma factors, which are important, the change in axis, and the different rotation and the words used. So it should be a bit, make a bit more sense to you. Thank you.